and welcome guys welcome back to the channel today we're doing something crazy we're going to continue the work of our previous episode where we developed a show called runner in c but now we're going to make it staged so as you can see our previous show called called sr.c had all, all the payload inside and the full payload was stageless and that's why a lot of antivirus called us because the full payload with no signature is there so it's easy for them to just see the signature, compare, and get our payload. Now we can upgrade and make it staged, so it's gonna download the payload from the web into a byte array, and then execute the stuff we did before. I know it's gonna be fun, so let's just start and dive in. All right, let's start with the environment. Once again, we have that command vm, which I love doing stuff like that on it because it's configured and built for such stuff. So we have command vm right here, we're going to develop the C, the C payload, the full C code. Here we're going to test for antivirus evasion by importing 20 scanme and so on. And here is the Kali vm box, where we're going to pretty much develop the shell code here. And on the next pane we're going to set a listener where we're going to catch the shell. Now let's get back to commando since most of the work is going to be done from there and explain what we did in the previous video. I strongly recommend to watch it, if you missed it, you can find it right here on the top right corner. And I've discussed like the whole theory behind the code. But in a nutshell, we have a giant piece of code which re resembles a byte array. This is a machine instruction in hex. We saved it right here. It's a stageless payload. And then we invoke that stageless payload by using various Windows APIs like virtualalloc. We copy it to the allocated space and just run it. We can access Windows APIs by simply including Windows.h. So it's that easy. Now with that just being said, let's just move on into make that thing staged because now as you can see the full payload is here. It's not staged, it's stageless and that's why most of the AV are getting that easy because you know the full payload with no signature from MSF Venom is staying here. Like I was amazed that some of the antivirus did not catch that but let's just try to do better this time. Now in order to make things to work, we must need to find a way to execute command or to perform web requests download the bytes remotely from the box and then execute it the same way. Now I've done some time researching of how to perform web requests on C and most of the guys said to Stack Overflow of course said that it's easier to just perform curl and indeed it is because when when using low level language like C it's it's not that easy task to just make requests, parse data, doing with headers and all the bullshit you have there but it's simple, it's really simple when you just go system and curl. Now the problem the problem arises because if we use to copy the code and use it on our own, so let's create a new source file, paste the code there, and if we run that, of course it's gonna work. But that thing is not safe to into a variable. So if we request our shell code, the remote shell code on the server, it will not get saved into a variable. That made me thinking and I decided to search for a workaround solution about that to figure out something and I stumbled across this post where of course both of the links are gonna be in the video description so you can check them out and here the guy is showing how to, how to pretty much parse the output of the command into a variable which is perfect for our job so if you copy the code or just that thing right here Let's just do it like that. Or actually, I'm going to start from the very beginning. I'm just, I'm just, just going to copy the whole code. I need to... What was the multi-line comment from C? Not sure. Never mind. This code is simple. Let me just paste that and see how that thing works. So let me just call it... Uh, stager. If, if it's Stager, I believe that the AV is going to catch on the name. So let's just call it ST for Stager. All right. So when that thing happens... It's invoking the ls command, like right here, and the output should be parsed into a the character value, value a variable, one character at a time because that's not a string; it's a character. It's just a single character. So if you run that, we can see I have the list of my directories there, the files, and if I were to pretty much type here, printf, just to verify my theory, printf new line. Now we should see character, new line, character, new line. So all the characters should be like in a new line. And it is. So that pretty much means that we are getting the output of the command line by uh, character by character, which is perfect for our need because we want to read the show code and then parse it line by line, character by character into a variable. 
Now for that purpose, let's first generate one. Let's go to the Kavi box and do MSF Venom, P, Windows, Share, Reverse TCP, Format Raw, and then type output to be code.bin for binary. And here let's set up a simple netcat listener just to make the job done and wait a little bit to generate the shellcode. Now it should be done and we see it's been 460 bytes. Now let's drive config and do python3 http server to host it. Let's copy the IP address and modify our C code. Now here instead of ls we're gonna do curl http paste the IP code.bin and this should get the bytes, the bytes from the binary file. If I run that, we can see the raw bytes all on new line. So let's remove the new line there and let's see how that thing really like looks. And we can see a bunch of gibberish and that thing represents a bytes because bytes are normally type of data you cannot read because it's not string. It's not meant for people. It's meant for machines. So I'm sure the machine is gonna understand that. So we need to find a way just to parse to the interpreter to the CPU itself. So, we have a way to grab all the contents of the, of the byte of the payload character by character. Now we need to embed that into an array. So, let's do like unsigned char and do like maybe code, which is going to be 460 bytes long. So, we can either do that here or to make the code more stable, we can, we can create a counter. For example, let's do it like uh, in counter equal zero. And here each time the C is being read, we're gonna do like counter equals counter plus one. And now if we print the counter like like right here, print F percent D and do counter, we can see it's exactly 460 bytes. And something happened, yeah. We didn't we didn't uh, put semicolon. Yeah, you can see 460 bytes. So that's important because when we're talking about uh, all kind of interaction between process and shell codes, the memory is really important. So yeah, since we have the size, we can do like, instead of doing uh, unsigned char code 460, we can paste it right here and do counter. Now that's gonna define an array having the exact size of the payload it reads, which I believe is more scalable. If I can talk about scalability while coding shellcode runner, but you know, why not? So we have defined the variable, which is going to be the shellcode itself, and we need to transfer the shellcode into that variable. Now that's been done, so pretty much we need to either loop make the same loop once again, because now we defined the code here, or we can do it like the old way, like right here with 460 and implement it right here. So Let's do it with the, uh, as I said, scalability variant, like right here, but we need to loop the little things once again. So let's just do that. Now C is gonna be reset to zero, like why like that? I think that we don't need to pick close the pipe because yeah, that thing is not gonna work. Actually, forget about that, forget about that. It was a mistake and it's gonna make the code really, really much uh, harder and not implemented right. So I'm gonna remove that thing here, place it here and do it the old way with 460 bytes. So we need to take note of how many of the size of the byte we generated, like right here. Generate a, a character array having that much bytes. We can remove the counter because obviously we don't need it. I was thinking about some crazy ideas on runtime and it failed, but never mind, it's fine. So let me remove the counter like that and instead of printing, oh, we need the counter. We need the counter. So we're gonna do int counter equals it's one equals zero, and then we're gonna perform counter equals counter plus one. And between that, we're gonna do code counter is gonna equal to C. And that thing right here is gonna whoop through every single one of the characters we downloaded and append it to the variable we generated here. So if I were to remove that printf thing right from here and do printf percent s and specify code, I should be able to see the exact same payload as before if we did everything right. But we didn't. So let me debug that thing out. 
One eternity later. But maybe that's not the correct way of, of uh, displaying strings. But I believe that the array should be successfully copied. So now we have the next task, which is pretty much to get the shellcode runner here, the methods, copy it right over there, include include windows.h, and this should be fine. So let's test it out. We need we have a variable called code, and let's rename that into code. Now do code right here, size of code. Alright. And that should be it. So I'm not needing that return. And if everything is right, if the array is being copied correctly, we should be able to get a callback to our copy box. So let's save it. Let's see if everything is set up on that side. So let's give that thing out, set up a new server, and let's run the executable. So testing three, two, one. It read the shellcode. It pretty much hangs which from the previous lesson we know that it's something nice and we achieved callback. So apparently there were no problem, but it was me not knowing how to correctly print the string. So it was like successfully transferred and it works. So that's how you achieve like a stage into your shellcode. Now we don't have shellcode here. We manually like read it from the web dynamic reward it and dynamic execute it. Now the next thing I want to see is actually how that thing behaves against various antiviruses. So let me go to anti scan me, browse and navigate to st.exe. Scan file and file port failed, not sure why, so maybe their API is overwhelmed I believe. So we're gonna hold this for a little while and I'm gonna do it again to see how that goes. All right, guys, we're back, and as you can see, a bunch of fires passed, and now it's dark in here. Never mind, but the API of Anti Scan Me is still not working. So, as you can see, I've tried all of things like going through private browser, incognito mode, never mind. So, it does not work, and I've decided to try it on my Windows 10 client. So, at least we can see if we can bypass Defender. So, let me set up the environment real quick Python 3 HTTP server. The executable is pre-compiled, so we're gonna use that. Then NC and VOP443. And now let's go to commando, copy the file we generated, and just place it here. Alright, so we've bypassed the signature based detection because it touched the disk without any kind of like errors. So let me see if that bin is turned to on. Manage setting. Yeah, it's been on. The other settings are off. So let me try to execute it to see what's going to happen. Run. As we can see, we print out the shell code and we get a shell. So we successfully bypass Defender by simply staging our payload. So even though we are using MSF Venom generated payload, and even though the generated payload is stageless, we were still able to bypass Defender by simply making manual stager, which is nice. and. I am glad it worked. Alright guys, I'm back. I decided to pretty much start to edit my video. When I decided actually why not give anti scan me one more try since a day had passed. And now let's just go and do that. So I'm here and let's hope that this time the API would work. So I'm gonna port the st.exe, the one we generated like yesterday. Scan it and let's see the results. Just by converting it to stager. Let's see if we can able if we were able to bypass more antivirus engines. Come on. <laughs> oh, I think we generated a monster, guys. We created a monster. So here is the thing, here is the here is the moment to say I'm not responsible for your actions with that code. It's just for educational purposes. And you do everything on your own head and responsibilities. So I was not, I was definitely not expecting that, but it looks like we did something crazy. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching and see you right in the next one, guys.